Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at the Dark Flash DM2, a M.2 drive cooler, and also adds a little bit of addressable RGB to your blingy build. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we'll be taking a look at Dark Flash's DM2. This is a drive cooler and also a uh, bling modifier for your PC rig. So this has got an addressable RGB setup inside, which is compatible with those five volt addressable three pin headers. We'll show you those a little bit later on, but this is essentially designed for your M.2 drive. So whether they are the M.2 SATA style or whether they're M.2 NVMe, doesn't make a difference as long as it conforms to the 2280 form factor or smaller, then it's absolutely fine. So what do we actually get in the box? Well, not actually a great deal. Looking at the box, you get the logo on the front and also it shows you what it looks like. On the back, it goes through all of the specifications, sizes, etc. I'll put those on the screen for you so you can see them now. But essentially, it's 25 millimeters high, 15 millimeters wide, and 75 millimeters long. This is a passively cool device, so there is no fans or anything on here. It purely uses the metal as a agent to increase the mass to increase the cooling. So ideally, you want to have a little bit of airflow in your case so that the airflow passes across the metal and therefore keeps things cool, very much like a radiator. So inside the packaging, this is a little bit odd, but you do get, there are instructions, but sadly, they're actually printed on the inside of the box. So uh, yeah, luckily there isn't too much to do on this particular one. What we do get inside the box also is some self-adhesive thermal pad and also the drive cooler itself. And as you can see, it does look pretty cool. We've got the dark flash logo, on the front there, and also you've got these opaque areas where the RGB floods through, which no doubt you've already seen some B-roll for. Connected to the unit is a 50 centimeter cable, so that should be enough to stretch to most builds to go into either your motherboard's addressable RGB header or perhaps into a hub of some sort. Just in case you're only limited on your headers, there is the header itself, and also there is an additional pass-through which will allow you to daisy chain some devices. On the inner side, you can see there is a slight ridge. So this is where the self-adhesive will go into. And then, as you'd expect, your M.2 drive will sit on top of there. We will be doing a full installation of this a little bit later in the video, so you can see what's actually like. But the real reason we're doing this is because my particular motherboard, which is the MSI Gaming Wi-Fi Edge, doesn't actually have an M.2 cooler on my lower drive. So my main drive, which is the PCI Express Gen 4, has got a cooler built into it. But the drive at the bottom, which is a PCI Express Gen 3, currently doesn't. So I've done some benchmarks to see what the temperatures are like, which you'll be seeing on the screen now. And actually I was surprised how warm the drive actually got. At uh, idle's temperatures is around about 26 degrees, but did hit up to around about 60 degrees C under a full load. Now this wide range of temperatures possibly isn't good for the drive in the long term. And also because I use that drive for my video editing work, it's generally in use quite often, scrubbing along the timeline, rendering, all those kinds of things. So the drive is actually getting hammered quite frequently. So ideally, keeping the drive a little bit cooler should, in theory, improve its lifespan and possibly its performance. But we'll certainly find that out as the video goes on. So I think the best thing to do right now is to actually get on and actually install it in the PC. So this is the, uh, the unit itself, as you can see. And um, we need to put our M.2 drive in here. So the first thing we need to do is to put our adhesive strip into the drive itself. And then just gently smooth it down just to make sure that it stays in place. Then we can peel off the backing off the other side. And then we'll take the drive out to place it onto there. Using a magnetic screwdriver, remove the screw from your M.2 drive. And then you can remove the drive from the motherboard. Next thing to do is to match up the indentation at the back of the drive with the section on the back of the unit. Okay, so there is the drive actually in the unit and it's actually really difficult to do. So I ended up putting the pad in first and then putting the drive in. You can see just about there's tiny little lugs in the, uh, in the corners there. And actually the lugs are actually really difficult to get in. So you do have to use a quite a lot of pressure on the drive. So I'm just hoping and praying that it still works. Hopefully it will do, we'll soon see. So now we can put the drive in, hook in the, uh, the M.2 fingers And then just push the drive down at the back. 
and we can get our screw again and put the screw back in not using too much tension on there just so it holds in place and that essentially is it so that's the drive installed got the screw in so now we've got our rgb cable now luckily this board's actually got a header down in this bottom corner so i can connect there or i could run it through the back and actually connect it to the uh the up here hub that we're using in this particular pc so that is it for the installation let's uh, get it hooked up and fire up and see what it looks like okay so the uh, drive has been installed and i gotta be honest with you it wasn't the easiest thing in the world but certainly wasn't one of those unsurmountable tasks and it managed to go in eventually i think depending on your drive and the width of it that is where you may come into some problems but certainly once it's in there it seems to be very firmly attached and those little lugs actually on the uh, drive cover itself do seem to hold it in place rather nicely without having the need for any screws or anything like that or some really strong double-sided tape which could potentially remove the uh, the ram chips from the drive with yeah we've been there before uh, you can check out that video up here so on to the results so the visual results as you can possibly see from some of the b-roll it does look fantastic and certainly adds a little bit of underglow to the pc in an area which was previously pretty dark now the actual temperatures is where things get a little bit interesting and i feel i must explain it a little bit so temperature wise with the bare drive we had a low of 26 degrees c we had a high of 59 degrees c so just a shade under 60 which is still within the spec of the drive but is a little bit warm for my particular liking now after installing the dm2 we had a lowest temperature of 30 degrees c which is four degrees higher um, the reason for that is if you think of it is when you wear a coat and you go outside and it's windy now if you wear a coat your temperature is going to be pretty stable you are slightly insulated so it keeps some of your heat in but if you take your coat off the wind chill certainly does take you down a few degrees and it feels considerably colder in the same respect obviously if you don't wear a coat and it suddenly gets very hot then you feel it on your skin straight away whereas with the insulation of the drive cooler it obviously absorbs some of that heat and we've got a high of 48 degrees c so around about 11 degrees difference which is actually a pretty decent saving now some of you are probably wondering that's fine but is it actually any better than the ones that come pre-installed on your motherboard well actually i did test it against the msi frozer which is on the gaming edge wi-fi motherboard and actually the results were relatively similar we had a low of 32 degrees c and a high of 50 degrees c so the low was about three degrees higher the high was about two degrees higher so certainly the dark flash dm2 does do a little bit better and of course it adds that also important rgb bling so to summarize essentially for what is around about six pounds worth of rgb cooler i think it's actually a fantastic deal if you're buying it from aliexpress where ugly bob got this one from and kindly sent it to us for review you're paying around about nine dollars again we'll put some details in the video description below which translates to roughly about six uk pounds take into consideration a little bit of postage and variance in exchange rates etc and still it's going to be way less than 10 pounds so i think for adding that little bit of extra bling and reducing your drive's temperatures by somewhere in the region of about 15 percent overall and hopefully providing a little bit more longevity in the drive i think it's definitely worth it and certainly gets a thumbs up from me so overall, apart from the uh, slightly finicky and a little bit tricky due to the size of the drive, the installation, other than that, I think it's definitely well worth it and certainly well worth your money. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.